Before the break, we asked you, true or false, a player may rake a bunker before he plays to tidy it up. The answer is true. Well, here we are at the 16th par three. Absolute monster. What can I say about it? 224 it is playing today to that pin. Now, there's two ways to play it. You're going to run it in like a typical Lynx style, like Tommy Morris would do. Stand there, bump it low, pitch it about 20 yards short of the green, scuttle it up onto the green and hopefully gets close. Or you fly it all the way and hopefully it sticks. I'm going to try, try it myself and give it a go. Now, first one, I'm going to try and fly it straight into the middle of the green and hopefully it sticks. And I tell you what, I don't think I'll be seeing him again. Right, now with a run shot. Thank you, Caddy. You're a top man. Right, run shot. Back of the stance, hands forward. We're gonna run this baby in. Now this one could be pretty good. Here we go. Up on. Look at this. Go on if it goes in. Ah. Uh, they say the song, two out of three ain't bad but one out of two ain't bad either. Cheers. I feel like a little forearm, look, guys, draw. Just low, back foot. Close the club face, it'll go in every time. Hey guys, what can I say? Goosebumps all over. Can't believe I've just done that. But anyway, <laughs> right, I know this thing's gonna be a bit messy, me describing this hole now, but I'm obviously going to say this is like a ridiculously great hole, but this is what you call a par three. I mean, I've hit my four iron in a region of about 227 yards. I mean, look at this green now. Look at it. Look at all the hollows. I mean, look at it. You've got all this here. I mean, that's going to come all the way back to us as well. I mean, it just shows you the severity of this green. I mean, I've pitched it way short, about 20 yards short of that green. It's run up and obviously it's gone in the hole. And, uh, you know, I think last day's play is going to be around here. I mean, really and honestly, guys, I'm lost for words. What can I say? I'm chuffed to bits. Just look at the way he played it again. He was talking about how he's drawn it in, and he did. Just low, got it to run up. I mean, it's a tremendous shot, but unfortunately, it's just a three. <laughs> because that's three off the tee, poor old John. Oh, Ross, putting a damper on it. We've said he's going to do it all year, haven't we? We, we said did. he's going to stick one in, and he only has. Well done, the irrepressible John E. Morgan. Fantastic stuff. Well, back to the action. I tell you what, before we do return to action, I did like that question before the break, but very important that we point out it is true, but... Yeah, it's info yeah, important, like you say. It is true, you can rake the bunker, but you can't rake it if it's on your line of play or if it helps improve the lie of your ball so it's got to be away from your line of play so this 16th is going to cause a few problems to our leaders and all the players here and 17 of course which James Moore is on right now big hole for him yeah Moore just fading a little bit Ooh, it's mighty close to those OBs now then far with 16 ahead of him he would dearly love to do a John Morgan there, wouldn't he? But 15 to get through first, and he's not happy there. That's not the first time we've seen him react like that today. Yeah, I'm, I've been just sort of watching his swing, and it's been slightly short in the shoulder turn. When you get a bit nervous and when you get a little edgy, your turn becomes a little short, and he's trying to do it with his follow-through, and he's just pulling one or two to the left. Yes, hasn't won on the Euro Pro so far this year, but uh, Daniel Gavins has... Oh, don't tell me that's going to come back somewhere close. No, it's drifting away. Yeah, he, he played that shot, tried to get it to go up the bank and come back down, but he just hit it a fraction too hard. Yes, there was method in the madness. Now, Rubo from, from a very similar position would have seen that. Needs to learn from it. Now, a much better line for James. Just needed to go further up the hill. It's bizarre, isn't it? Go further away to get closer. Doesn't make sense, but that's Link's goal for you. Far with a chance up and down to get to eight under. Well, that's a little untidy. It was a straightforward shot. 
left himself seven feet or so. Yeah, I wonder if he will tighten up a little bit during the course of these closing holes. I think you can see why this 17th is such a tough hole. Only been two birdies all day on this hole. Trouble all the way down the left. Yes, and factor in a bit of breeze and it's a monster. How about oh. this? How about this? Go on. That's fantastic. Well, he's putted like a dream all day, as Gavin's. And once again, that putting stroke stands the test. Well, that's usually the difference, isn't it? And the last day, who uses the putter best? And probably nobody has putted better than Oliver Farr. And he's now what, eight under par, and he's given himself that little cushion for these last few holes. Yeah, I don't think you can ever run away with a tournament on a Lynx course, but this is as close as it's going to get. And Rue Botham as well slides his putt in. So two pars with two very good putts there. Now here's the the real test now for Far this closing stretch. We know how bad it is just down the road at Carnoustie. This ain't too much shot. better. Great shot. It's online. What about the bounce? Yep, not enough club. Look at that breeze now. It's got up straight into the wind, and he ballooned it. It looked so good from behind the tee, but fortunately, that's going to be tough. More with the claw grip on the putter. And it works again. In she goes. Big smile from James Moore at 17. 18 to play. Can he put a bit of pressure? on far. This is a good 40 yards short of the flag. Yeah, that is unbelievable. A little bit of frustration here for Oliver Farr and, uh, and some danger signs as well. Uh, Rebotham. Not being comfortable from this longer grass. And it's another one that's called him out, I'm afraid. He was very wary that if he pulled this, there's all that horrible gorse all the way down the left-hand side. Ooh, low driller. Getting this one to run up the green, maybe. Go on. Oh, we saw a very brief sight of it. Wonderful hole, 17. But it's going to sort the men from the boys today. Far then with work at 16. No. Oh. Ross, that is not what he wants. Coming to 17 18 to have dropped one at 16. That's not good for the confidence. Yeah, uh, I suppose I thought 15th was almost like the ceiling deal, but he needed to make four there, uh, make three there to give himself that real comfortable. A comfortable amount going into these last couple of holes, but his nearest chasers, of course, they're struggling on 17 too. Yeah, it depends what target they, they set him, doesn't it? Gavin's and Rue both them. Yeah, this is a big drive. It's a bit short and a bit quick. Has it gone down that left hand side? Oh, it has. Oh dear, no, no, no. And Oliver Farr getting very tight here within touching distance of a title. That's not the place to be. I do wonder if uh, Gavins and Rubotham have just taken a little look over the shoulder there to see that group searching for the ball of far. Well done. Very appreciative crowd here in Montrose. Montrose, as I guess we should say. I think you can only say that if you are a local. It's difficult, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's not the more the merrier down the last here for James. Vital putt here for James Rubotham. Good stroke. Turn. Oh, stayed exactly there. You hit that perfect. So he 
we go. Ross, just to clarify the ruling here. Yes, it's uh, he's taken a, a penalty drop, two club lengths from the point where the ball uh, is lying. He dropped within those two club lengths. As up ahead, Gavins makes his four. Very good little punch there. He knows how important that was. What a competitor he is, the De Vere Orton Hall player. Now then, Fart with the driver gave himself just enough distance to get past the gorse, so he's got, got a view, but it's medicine time, I'm afraid. And this is where it is vitally important on the links that you do take that medicine when it comes, you know, you can get yourself out of trouble by going backwards sometimes. Well, we saw so many people. I mean, there's, here's an example of Lynx Golf again there, James Moore. His second shot found the bunker and he had to play out away from the hole. Yeah, Birdie would give Moore the clubhouse lead. But Farr has other things to worry about, clips it. But he's put too much on this and... Oh, James Moore's round at the moment is in the balance. So what can Gavins do? Birdie here could really cause some interesting things. Very flat-footed there, trying to hit it low, drill it low right to left. And he has done that, but overdone it. It's safe over there, though. Playing partner Rubotham, dropping a shot at 17. Same sort of thing. Keeping it very low. Uh, staying out of that longer grass which has been the downfall for James today another one on the path now remember what Robinson did about an hour ago not going to happen I'm afraid for more that's what can happen when it settles in between the in, in between the sort of the tar in the bits of the tar it just bumps straight up in the air that's when you need a little tiny bit of loft Oh dear, it's all happening isn't it, we said it would on the back nine, didn't think it was going to be this dramatic though, Oliver Farr who was running away with this in inverted commas, this tournament. Of course James Moore was at six under only what, three holes ago. Yeah again post tournament analysis and Moore is going to be kicking himself here, so double bogey putt, this brings Farr right back to the field. And that brings the likes of Rubotham and Gavins into it. How things can change on a Lynx course in just such a short space of time. Seventy for James Watts. With a back nine of well, a back nine of thirty-six, not bad considering we've seen some of the horrors on this back nine. And here is a horror. Right under your nose, I'm afraid, for his playing partner, James Moore. Oh, what could have been? Has to settle for a 72 after that seven at 18. And that is a real shame. Gavins have to try and control out of this rough. He's got the height. Will he get the stop? He has. Now then, that's really an excellent shot. A smattering of applause there from the members at the clubhouse. I think it deserved more than that under this sort of pressure. I don't think as yet maybe the double bogey's gone up on the board. Yes, yeah, good point. I'm not sure if Gavins is aware of just how much the tournament has turned in his favour. Now, Oliver Farr, <laughs> goodness me. Clearly, the intention shown there from the tee. Much better swing there, Simon. They really committed behind the ball, but there's the old golfing gods bounce. Always interesting from the tees with the gorse there. It can very often look like there is nothing to hit to, but get past that and there's landing areas on a Lynx course. A 
Henry Botham just down that little slope gave it a bit of extra pace he's, he's backed himself on pace today as James and he's potted well and so is this man we've seen him sink some clonkers and I'm going to trademark that I think that's your word isn't it oh no straight up and after it that would have been the dramatic finish so if Gavins can roll that one in for five under then it's all about the waiting game as far comes up the 18th. Oh, tentative. <laughs> but it's dropped. Well, terrific. 33 back nine. That really is the catalyst to his position. And I was saying sort of like six under, five, six under would have been the mark. And he's posted five. And I don't know, that could be, that could be a winning total. Yeah, it deserves to be in contention after that back nine. And James Rubotham, again, he will be considering what happened on the way back to the clubhouse, and that's where his round came to pieces. Still a good effort, but Gavins goes back to the clubhouse now. I'm sure he'll keep an eye on things here. Not a great lie, this. This is sat down. This is going to come out like a rocket. Might need to sit down quickly unless he struck it really well. Ooh. Goodness me. Oh, this would be heartbreaking for Oliver Farr. And Gavins, who's already won this year, looking very cool at the back of the 18th as he watches the man so desperate for the win on the Euro Pro. Try and finish this off. So this for the win for Oliver Farr. Looking at it intently, has he given it enough? No is the answer. And uh, now the tension, Ross, really on. Yeah, it's, it's one of those, isn't it? He's left himself one that he should really hit in nice and firmly. Standing close to his partner's marker. Great Here you go. Great putt. Playoff forced by Oliver Farr. The second playoff that he's had to endure this year. But I guess he is well prepared after his loss to Mark Lasky at Row Allen Castle. So that's how things finish off. And if you think back just uh, half an hour ago, Oliver Farr was absolutely flying. He's conceded three shots over those closing holes. And that's let Daniel Gavins into the mix, looking for his second Euro Pro win. So you know what's coming next. Back to the 18th tee for the dreaded playoff. The coin toss to see who has the honour. Yeah, well. And a half-hearted play well. Well, on hole one, the honours were even. Both players split the fairway with excellent tee shots. And then with the Montrose crowd watching on in eager anticipation, both players went on to make the middle of the green. But with plenty of work still to do, they both lag their putts, needing two for par. It was an eventual ride back to the tee for hole two. Two well-struck tee shots again put both players on the fairway, but it was Farr who took the early initiative with a fine approach to within 10 feet to warm appreciation from the fantastic gallery here at Montrose. Gavins, though, came close with his birdie putt, nearly snatching control. But as he watched on, Farr missed his chance. Both players ending up making par and leaving the Eagle Orchid Scottish Masters title still very much up for grabs. So two playoff holes down, how long could it go? A sizeable crowd gathered on the 18th here at Montrose and perhaps they and the rest of us remembering that on the European Tour earlier this year there was a nine hole playoff. It couldn't go on that long, could it? Well, these two players look quite closely matched and they're just about to tee off again for the third time in this playoff. Nine times around, Ross, and you were there. I was El Soler, yes, for the Spanish Open. That was a, a monster playoff on a, a very difficult hole as well. But this is a fairly straightforward hole. It's only 368 yards. You can see the players just trying to avoid the bunkers with a long iron. And that's landed in that horrible stuff. So will it be third time? a charm in this playoff but second time's a charm for this man Oliver Farr second playoff of his Euro Pro season and I would say that that is very much advantage to the Welshman 
That's in great spot there, just on the left half of the fairway. Knowing that his opponent will have very little control out of that left-hand rough, that, that thick green stuff. He's only got a, a wedge, maybe a nine iron at the most. Long backswing. Club face was well open at the top. Flicked at it with his hands and that flew. And the path calls again. So Oliver Farr, the dream to win on the Euro Pro Tour, is now very much a reality here. One good shot, Ross. And this should be it. Slightly short backswing. I think he's pushed it and maybe tried to wrap it with his hands. Well, it's on the green, but I think it's going to be more about what Gavins does here rather than what Oliver Farr does, and I guess that relieves a bit of the pressure. He's lying OK. Now, the, the simple shot here would be, uh, you know, just maybe he's going for the, the John Morgan way. Simple shot would be a little wood, a little five, five wood, and he would have got it to bump and run along. That is curtains, I'm afraid. And Oliver Farr knows it. This has got to go in. Oh, fantastic effort. But the door now wide open for Oliver Farr. And Oliver Farr can really enjoy this moment. You know, it's not over yet. He's, he's got to concentrate, get his speed right on his first part. You know, if you've got two, you may as well take them. It's a long range first part. He's not happy. He's not happy. Still a bit of work to do here. And the members know it. Well, they've all missed that part before, haven't they? <laughs> For a little greedy they've played. Absolutely. Gavins can't roll it in. So once again, the pressure is relieved. Six, unfortunately, on the third playoff hole. So it's not going to be a brace of wins for Daniel. But it should be a first Euro Pro Tour victory for Farr. And it is. The emotion now can finally flow. It's been a long season for Oliver Farr, but he's finally got what he came for. That win on the Euro Pro Tour. Well done to him. And he claims the Eagle Orchid Scottish Masters. Smiles all round for Oliver Farr, but disappointment for Daniel Gavins. You played really well. Um, obviously, the playoff didn't go for you, but as for the rest of the season and qualifying and getting that challenge to a spot, it's looking really good now, isn't it? It's looking really good. It's, uh, you know, the extra five grand, it's, I well, I'm hoping it'll, it'll get top five at the end of the season, but we'll just have to wait. You know, there's, there's two more events left. If I can maybe post another good score in one of those, it's, it should be, yeah. be on. So, George Wargar maintains his position at the top of the order of merit and is looking very good to advance next year. Daniel Gavins, with a win and a second, finds himself in second, while Oliver Farr finds a season of consistency plus a win equals third. This week very definitely belongs to the Welshman. Oliver Farr, the Eagle Orchid Scottish Masters champion. Oliver, very many congratulations. That was quite a roller coaster for us to watch and I'm sure for you as well. What were you thinking on 18? Because you'd lost three shots on 16 and 17. Um, I, uh, you have to look at it in a way um, that you don't want to. Yeah, you, there is a chance of losing it. But I was quite focused on trying to make a par. And then, you know, getting the playoff, that was my main goal. Because I know I wasn't in, in, a, in a great frame of mind uh, going into the last hole. But I sort of recovered well um, and had a good two putt. The next step up, the Challenge Tour, is looking a, a bit closer, isn't it? Yeah, I've been fortunate to play seven Challenge Tour events this year, so you know you get a taste for it. Um, it feels nice to win, um, and you know hopefully I can sort of maybe get to the Challenge Tour next year. We've got a couple more events left yet. Yeah. Absolutely, a very popular winner today as well, ladies and gentlemen. Your winner, Oliver Farr. Next up then on the Euro Pro Tour, we're at the fantastic Moore Allerton Golf Club in Leeds, which offers some players one last chance to make the top 60 and qualify for the Tour Championships at Prince's. Here's one last chance then to enjoy John Morgan's hole-in-one, but incidentally, we'll never hear the last of.
Well, that's it for this week. And from Ross McFarlane and myself, Simon Golding, thanks for watching. See you again soon.